Are you hurting my friend? Are you in such pain that you don't know what to do? Do you feel if only someone could come and put their arms around me, if only they could hold me, if only I could look in their eyes and they could tell me and promise me that it would be all right. I know then I could make it. I know then that I wouldn't be alone. Oh, precious one, that's what's about to happen today as we look at God's precepts for life. Welcome, beloved. We are entering the second segment of the book of Isaiah. And I want you to know that this is the most incredible, incredible portion of Isaiah. Because what God does from the very beginning, from Isaiah 40 on, is he introduces a word, and that word is comfort. Isaiah 40 opens up this way. Listen to it very carefully. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Do you feel like you have received double? Do you feel, precious one, like what you're going through is more than you can handle? And I've got news for you. It is not more than you can handle. What God wants to do is God wants to wrap his arms of truth around you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to speak to you from the word of God and tell you that it is going to be all right. He wants you to take your eyes and stop looking at the circumstances, at the tragedy, at the trial, at this overwhelming pain that has overtaken you, this, this, this pain that is so bad that you're sitting there in absolute disbelief. He wants you to take your eyes off of that, and he wants you to put your eyes on him. He wants you to look for him in this situation. He wants you to wait for him. He wants you to hope in him. And so as you open up Isaiah 40, and we're going to look at the context in just a minute, but as you open up the second segment of Isaiah, it opens up with the word comfort, and then it repeats it, oh, comfort my people, comfort my people. And then Isaiah chapter 40 ends with a passage that if you've been around Christianity or you've been in church, you probably have heard these verses, but maybe you don't understand them in their context. And they're going to take on far new beauty as you dig into the word of God with me as we study Isaiah. But listen to what he says. He brings Isaiah 40 to a close. Now remember, chapter divisions are made by man. So the message goes on. But look at verse uh, 27 of Isaiah 40. Why do you say, O Jacob, he's talking to Jacob, another name for Jacob, remember, was Israel. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my ways hidden from the Lord? And the justice do me escapes the notice of my God. I shouldn't be going through this. This is not right. And he says, do you not know <laughs> Jacob? And he's saying to you, do you not know? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not become weary or tired. You're weary, you're tired, you feel like you're about to faint, but God's there. He's there to comfort you. He does not become weary. He does not become tired. His understanding 
is inscrutable. In other words, he has all the answers. You can't plumb the depths of them. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary. Did you get that? He gives strength to the weary. You know, when we're in a trial, when things are, are, are looming before us and they are scaring us to death, when that happens, God steps in, if you'll let him, and he'll give strength. He'll give you strength, strength to the weary and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, he says, yet those, and this is the verse I'm talking about, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. If you will wait for God. Now that word wait in the Hebrew is Q A W. A or Q A W A H. And that word means to look, to look for. That mean, uh, word means to wait. That word means to hope. It has the idea of that, that, you know, your strength is not going to come from inside. Your strength is going to come for the Lord. So you're looking for him. You're waiting for him. You are hoping in him. And what you're going to learn, precious one, in this week and in the weeks to come is you are going to learn his precious precepts for life that will enable you to do what it says. Now watch what it says. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. It says they will run and not get tired. They will walk and they won't, they won't faint. Now, as I say all this, and I'm going to do something that is a little, a little shocking, but as I say all this, look, look at my foot. I stumbled, <laughs> I stumbled badly. That's why I'm not standing up while I'm teaching you. And it's hard to sit here because there's so much I want to say, but I stumbled so badly that I asked the doctor when I was in the emergency room in Indiana, where I do not live. And I said to him, I, I don't understand, explain uh, how, what's the, the seriousness of this break. And he said, well, okay. He said, the next thing would be to lose your foot. So here I am. And what I want you to know is that in all of this and in everything that I've been going through, and, and honestly, there are things that I never dreamed I would go through. There are trials that I never dreamed that I would face. And, and I mean, one of them is, is less, than a, less than a month old. If I didn't know the Lord... If I didn't understand the word of God, if I didn't understand who God is and the principles and the precepts that we're going to teach you from, I, that I'm going to teach you from Isaiah, I say we because it takes a whole crew of us to do this. But if I didn't understand them, I tell you, I would stumble. I would faint. I, I'm not a youth, but I would grow weary and tired. But I want to tell you something. I obviously, I'm not a youth. Obviously, I am closer to the end of my life than I am even to the middle of my life or three quarters of my life uh, finished. And yet, you know what? I have the strength of youth. I have the strength and I can run and not be weary and I can walk and not be tired. Why? Because what I'm doing in, in a sense, and someone interpreted this way, this verse this way, that, that those that wait upon the Lord, those that exchange their strength for his. Now, it, uh, waiting doesn't mean to exchange a thing. But waiting means that you look for him. Waiting means you hope for him. Waiting means that you are, are, are counting on him and not on yourself. So that's what we're going to look at. This week, we're going to, by the grace of God, we're going to look at Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 41. Now, if you are new to the program, if you've just been flipping the dial and you found us, I want you to know it's in the sovereignty of God. 
This program is all about helping you discover truth for yourself. Daniel 1132b says this, the people who know their God will be strong. They will be able to take action. Isaiah earlier in the book talks about truth stumbling in the streets. And what's happened is we, truth has stumbled in the streets. We don't want truth to stumble in the streets. We want you to know truth because truth sets you apart. Truth gives you uh, a, a way to live that you know is absolutely certain. And so what we want you to do is we want you to study with us we want you to download, and, and it's absolutely free, our study guide on Isaiah. And what we're going to do is we're going to take you through Isaiah chapter 40 through 66, and we're going to teach you how to study Isaiah for yourself. So how do you connect with us? Well, you go to preceptsforlife.com, preceptsforlife.com, or you pick up the phone and you call the number on the screen. So either preceptsforlife.com or you go and call the number on the screen. And we will tell you how to do this so that you can study along with us. Because the way that you're going to be comforted, the way that you're going to find new strength is to look to God. But you can't look to somebody you do not know. Now, as Isaiah opens up this 40th chapter, and it is, a, it is a real swing in the book, as he opens up this 40th chapter, what I want you to see is I want you to see in Isaiah 39, he has just told them things aren't going to be so good in the future. He has just told them that they're going to be kicked out of their land, that they're going to go into captivity. Watch, let's go back to Isaiah 39 so I can put you into context. In Isaiah chapter 39, Isaiah has been talking to Hezekiah. Hezekiah is the king. Now, the book of Isaiah was written during the reign, and we're talking about the southern kingdom. It was written to, the, to Judah and Jerusalem during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. So Isaiah's prophecy covers those four kings. He mentions Uzziah in chapter 6. He mentions Ahaz and then talks to you about his death in chapter 14. And then he doesn't talk about Uzziah, Jotham. He leaves Jotham out. He comes to Ahaz. Then he comes to Hezekiah. And what does he say to him? Well, we'll look at it in just a minute. Well, I left you, <laughs> maybe in suspense. Maybe you wanted to know, hey, what was Isaiah saying to Hezekiah? Well, it wasn't good news. Remember, Hezekiah has been sick. Hezekiah has recovered when he was sick. Babylon sent him gifts. Now, Babylonians have shown up in Jerusalem. And Hezekiah has shown him everything that is in his house. I mean, he has shown him all that they have because he's right proud of it. It's going to get him in trouble. Listen to what it says in verse 5 of chapter 39. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, remember he's the king, hear the word of the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord of hosts means, hey, God's in charge. He's Jehovah, Yehovah, Sabaoth. He is the one that is over all the armies, angelic, earthly, etc. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and all that your fathers have laid up in store to this day, all your treasury, will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your sons will issue, who issue from you, whom you will beget, will be taken away, and they will become officials in the palace of the king of Babylon. Now, that ought to really strike fear. Now, 
Hezekiah? It says, then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord, which you have spoken is good. For he thought, for there will be peace and truth in my days. Now, you know what? This can be very typical of us. I know trials are coming. I know hard times are coming, but I've got myself covered. It's not going to affect me or so we think. Or it's, 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 it's not going to come in my time. I'm, I'm almost gone. I'm almost out of here. I'm not going to have to suffer. But that's not the right attitude. And what it does is it strikes fear in the hearts of the people. Because what they have just been told is, hey, everything in Jerusalem is going. All your treasures, all your people, all your sons, they're going to be led into captivity. They're going to be slaves. Now, what do you do when you get news like that? Well, the next thing, and you've got to remember, the next thing that happens is Isaiah has a word, and that word is, O oh, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. You know, I, since, since studying Isaiah and having been in Isaiah 50, there's a verse and it talks about how he awakens my ear morning after morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. And it says, he has given me the tongue of a disciple that I might know how to speak a, a word to those that are weary. A word to those that are weary. Well, this is what God does, is he speaks a word to Israel. Now, who is he speaking to? As he says, speak kindly to Jerusalem. As he says, say to her that her warfare is ended. Tell her that her iniquity has been removed. And if you look at the footnote in, in the inductive study Bible, and I hope you have one, but um, because it's the best study Bible out there that there is, because it doesn't tell you what to believe, but it tells you how you can discover truth for yourself. It says this, it, it says the way you could translate it is this, tell her that the penalty of iniquity has been accepted or paid off. In other words, your debt, your penalty, your punishment is all over. You have received double for your sins and it is over and you're not going to face it again. Now that is comfort. And he goes on then to tell them what is going to happen and that's what we're going to look at. But what I want to do today is I want to run you quickly and I mean quickly, through Isaiah up to this point. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. In Isaiah, as this book opens, God is dealing with them according to their sins. He is letting them know, you are going to the temple, you are making all these sacrifices, but you are filled with iniquity. So in chapter 1, he describes the state of Israel during this time. He says, alas, chapter 1, verse 4, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons who, who act corruptly. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from them. That's the way the book opens. Chapter one gives you the setting of these times. And yet, what is he telling them? He's telling them that their iniquity is going to be taken care of. That's the comfort that he is giving to them. And then we come to chapter two. And in chapter two, through chapter verses two through four, what do we hear? We hear that there is a day coming when all the nations are going to come to Jerusalem. It says, many peoples will come and say, verse three, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us our way, his ways, that we may walk in his ways. For the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations. He will render decisions for many peoples. They will hammer their swords into plowshares. It says, and they will re and he will render decisions for many peoples. It says, nation will not lift up sword against nation. Now listen carefully. And never again will they learn war. There's so many people that say we want to bring war to an end. Listen, we can't, but God can. And that's what he's telling them. And so then we move to chapter 7, verse 9, when uh, Isaiah confronts Ahaz. Remember, this is during the days of Uzziah. Uzziah dies in chapter 6, then Ahaz. And what does he say to Ahaz? If you will not believe, you will not last. If you will not believe, you will surely not last. He's telling them the way that you make it is to wait for me. The way that you make it is to hope in me. The way that you make it is to look for me. The way that you make it is by faith. And then he tells in the days of Ahaz that a virgin will bring forth a child. His name will be Emmanuel, God with us. He tells us in Isaiah 9, 6, and unto us a child will be born and a son will be given and, and the government will be upon his shoulders and he will sit on the throne of David. So he's pointing them to the future. He's pointing them to hope. He's pointing them to a Messiah. And you'll see the value of this uh, in our next lesson. And then in chapter 13 to 23, he gives the judgment of the nations. And as he gives the judgment of the nations, what he does is he starts off talking about the demise of Babylon. Babylon's not even on the scene. Assyria is the power. And yet God, because he knows the future because he has it all under his control as letting them know before they ever hear about Babylon, I've got them taken care of. I'm going to judge them. And so he tells about the judgment of the nations. God is going to judge Israel. God is going to judge the nations. But there is a day coming when the warfare will end and when the iniquity, the penalty will be totally paid. In chapter 24, he tells of the earth being laid waste. In chapter 29, he tells about the assault on Ariel, Ariel the lion, Ariel speaking of Jerusalem. In chapter 35, he tells about the glory of the Lord coming with vengeance and a highway of holiness prepared for the remnant. And then in 36 to 39, he speaks to Hezekiah and he tells him about the Babylonian judgment. But then, then he comforts his people. It's going to become so real to you, dear one, that it will be like him putting his arms around you. As we wrap up today's program, what is the precept for life that you need to take away? What is your assignment? Have you listened? Are you listening to me? What is your assignment? Because if I give you an assignment, precious one, it is so that you will be strengthened and enabled to go forward. So your assignment, I'll give that to you first, and then I'll give you your precept for life. Your assignment is to memorize, to write on a three by five card and memorize these verses. Verse 29 through 31. Verse 29 through 31. Now, if you're really, really good, what I want you to do is I want you to memorize verse 28 through 31. And I'll tell you how to do it. The way to memorize scripture is to write it out and then read it out loud so that you can hear it three times in a row, three times a day. That means you're going to say it out loud nine times. Now that's all you have to do. And when you do that, the very hearing of it, the very repeating of it, will bring it into your heart. That's your assignment. Start it today. 
uh, put it on a card, put it on the refrigerator, put it on the bathroom mirror, put it in your purse, put it in your pocket, and, and take it with you and do that three times a day. Have the family do it together. It's a good, good verse, good set of verses for them to uh, memorize and to hide in their hearts because I promise you, God will bring it back to your mind. Now, what is your precept for life? What is this truth of God that you're going to take and you're going to live by? Because the Bible says, through thy precepts, I get understanding and I hate every false way. Well, when you look around you and you look at the world, if you don't put on your Bible glasses and have a biblical worldview, you will see that it is natural it is natural for people to turn in a crisis to their own strength, to figure out how they are going to handle it, to run to this arm of flesh and run to that arm of flesh and say, what am I going to do? Tell me what to do. Now, I'm not saying you don't go to someone for help, but the first one you go to is the Lord. And what you need to do is you need to go to the Lord and say, okay, I'm in a crisis now, this is what you tell me in this verse. You tell me that if I will wait for you, that you will strengthen me. And that's what I'm going to do. That's your assignment. That's your precept for life today. Thank you for watching today. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life. Do you feel, precious one, like what you're going through is more than you can handle? And I've got news for you. It is not more than you can handle. What God wants to do is God wants to wrap His arms of truth around you. He wants to comfort you. Join us for our next program as we discover more Precepts for Life.